Alrighty. Let's do this. Let us do this. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> it is my distinct pleasure, my singular honor to welcome you to this edition of Handmade Hero. This is the show, and ladies and gentlemen, this is the show, not a show, but the show, where we code a complete game live on stream on Twitch, no engines, no libraries, no extraneous animals like ferret, for example. It is just us and the code. Uh, and we are, you know, I want to say it, we were kind of crushing it on the asset system. We kind of did a pretty good, a pretty darn good job so far. And I don't see any reason for us to sit on our collective, uh, or rest, I should say, on our collective laurels when we should forge forward and make things even awesomer. So today, let's see if we can wrap up what we were doing with the asset file merging, and then we would be in some pretty sweet territory, I think, setting ourselves up for a good next week, thanks to what we've done today. Sort of like when the basketball player puts like the, you know, sends the ball up and then another one comes and like dunks it, right? That's like what we're doing, only instead of basketball players, it's this week and next week, and the ball is the game, right? Do you see how that analogy works? I don't know who the opposing players are in this analogy. Um, <clears throat> you know, could be like the Visual Studio compiler or something like this, or the C++ standards committee. They could be in there like blocking us, right? That could happen. Um, I don't know who the refs are, probably like you know, the, the Intel chip, because obviously everything has to run like according to their rules or something. <clears throat> but I think what, you know, I'm trying to get across here, if nothing else, is that if you make an analogy, you should probably stop trying to extend that analogy somewhere after the point where you say who the two players in the ball are, because after that, it starts to get really confusing and hard to figure out. And then the analogy actually works against you because you actually get confused so the people who you're trying to communicate with are only going to be even more confused. So these are the types of important lessons, um, you know, when we talk about learning programming, obviously one of those things is learning how to make analogies to basketball. Uh, and so I hope everyone has sort of gained a little bit from that. I know I have. So if you are the type of person who would like to follow along with my basketball analogies at home, Today is day 151. By the way, I also don't watch basketball or know anything about it, so that makes it extra hard. Uh, so another pro tip might be try to use analogies in a sport that you actually know. So anyway, uh, today is day 151. If you would like to follow along with your own basketball analogies at home and you have pre-ordered the game on handmadehero.org, you want to unpack day 150's source code into a directory because that is the source code I will be starting with today. All right, let's see what we have in store for today. Let us see where we are at. Um, I see that I never actually deleted this. Somebody asked a question uh, about when you pass pointers and it looks like we've still got that in there. So maybe our first thing that we'll do today is delete the little code that we put in there uh, that uh, was sort of designed to show people <clears throat> who asked the question. Uh, something about why you pass pointers versus when you would, would you pass things by value. Uh, hopefully everyone got that yesterday. No need for that code to stick around. Uh, all right, so we were in the middle yesterday of making something that would open a set of asset files, merge their data together, uh, and then be able to run with them. And the reason we were doing that is because I wanted to take a look at what I might reasonably believe to be the shipping code that starts up the game in terms of pulling in the asset file. And in order to do that, um, I need to kind of imagine what that would look like. The reason we were doing that is so that we could define the platform layer API that we want uh, for sort of our final file API, like the thing that we're actually going to support on all of the platforms that Handmade Hero ships on. So this would not be test code. This would actually be like the API that we want to run the final game. So in order to do that, I always say write the test code first. This is an example of trying to write the test code first. So we're trying to put together here basically uh, a piece of code that shows what we would really be doing 
uh, for the real final thing where we load uh, the actual asset files and merge them together so that we can see what those data uh, reading APIs would look like, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and get back to that. All right. So uh, what we were suggesting is that we would have something called the platform file handle uh, and the platform file handle would allow us to basically hold open references to the asset files in the game, right? So we'd start up, we would look at what asset files were in the directory, we would load them all, um, well, sorry, we would open handles to all of them, right? And you can see that I wrote the code there for that, right? Uh, let's un unif def this guy out, there we go. Uh, so this was the code block that I was working on, and basically I said is, all right, we're gonna suppose that the platform can return to us sort of a group of files that all have the same extension, that we can iterate over them, that we can then open them and hold a file handle to them so we can talk about that file for, for the rest of the game while it's running, and then uh, that we can uh, go ahead and read singular chunks, like little, little individual chunks, out of that file. I also said that I want the file handle itself to remember whether it has encountered an error uh, and to be able to say that there has been an error on that file handle uh, so that later I can just do, you know, I can do a bunch of operations and then later just check a single check, do a single check to say, were there any errors? And if there were, uh, shut down gracefully. If there weren't, uh, continue, right? Uh, and so what we're going to do, you know, eventually we'll hopefully have some way in hand here of notifying users uh, in the game that something's gone wrong, maybe like a little dialog box, something like that. Uh, it's a little tricky how we might do that because we'll probably have to like, bake in a debug font to the executable or something, because if the asset file's not there, uh, we can't very well notify someone without a font, right? We need a font at least. So we may have to bake a little debug font in just for the emergency scenario where we can't even load our, our uh, fonts in at all. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. That's a little further down the line. All we know is that we need some way uh, of detecting it. So I wanted to make sure that we had a code path in there that was where we would note that this uh, error occurred so that it could be reported once we have a system. So once we do that, we would allocate space to store all of the assets uh, that we were going to load in. And again, uh, we're only talking about the sort of the metadata for those assets because the asset data itself is too big and we want to stream that in. So we're just talking about like, you know, making room for if there's, you know, 30,000 different things in the game, we make an array of 30,000 that holds the metadata so that we can quickly access that and know where we need to start loading it. Uh, we could even go one step further and stream that in, uh, but honestly, it's only going to probably be a megabyte or two, and you know, especially on PC, it would be actually more inefficient of us to constantly be loading it. So we probably don't want to do that unless we're on some much more memory-constrained platform uh, than, than Handmade Hero ever, may ever actually even run on. So that's, that's kind of a separate issue. So once we go ahead and do that, what we would like to do is load all of those assets actually in. And so what we're looking at here is that code. Uh, we're gonna have to uh, loop over, and I said this was a very inefficient way to do it, but I don't know that it will ever matter. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But what I would do is loop over all of the files and see if those files have assets of the particular type in them, right? So when we look through here, we find that uh, you know an asset uh, that the sort of that main asset array that tells us how many of each type there are. When we see a particular type, what we want to do is read out of the file that portion um, of the uh, of that asset array, so that, and put it in the right place, right? Uh, and then we will increment the asset count by however many uh, there were, right? Uh, asset count for type, something like that. We would read like that many in here. So what we need to do first, obviously, is compute uh, that asset count for type. And the way that we do that, again, is taking the one pass last asset index uh, for whatever the array says um, and subtracting it from the, uh, the first asset index, right? Because that is how many there actually would be. That's how many we would want to load in to, you know, we'd have to load them into obviously the right uh, position. So we'll take care of that in a second. But then we would advance by that many assets uh, and continue going, right? Uh, so that's all we would really need to do there. Uh, but once we have loaded these guys in, I alluded to this yesterday, another thing that we have to be able to do uh, is we have to be able to rebase the tag indices. 
And so let's do that first before we um, talk about you know, any of the other stuff here. So let's talk about that. So what we have is we have a set of tag arrays, right? We have a set of these uh, asset tags, right? Um, oops, and they're in the, uh, the, the file formats, right? So we have the HHA tag, right? And in the HHA tag, we have ID and the value. Now, that is what we need to identify our assets, but the way the assets reference those, right? If you look down here, is it says a first tag index and one pass last tag index. Those are absolute indices. So the HHA asset says, well, my first tag is tag five in the tag table, and then my last tag is, you know, or one pass the last tag is like seven. So I would go five and six are my two tags, right? So if there's only one file, that works fine, right? Because those, those will just be correct. But if there's two files, then the first file's tag indices will be correct, but the second files would be wrong, right? If we concatenated them on to each other, right? So the tag arrays get concatenated on, so tag zero of the second file is actually one past the last tag of the first file. So if there's a hundred tags in the first file, right? Then the hundred and first tag is actually gonna be tag zero of the second file. So all of the assets in the second file are pointing essentially are, are, their indices are wrong, and they need to be rebased uh, by the number of tags, right, that came before them. So that's what I want to do first. I want to go ahead and take care of that. Uh, that's a pretty straightforward thing to do, so we'll go ahead and we will do it, right? Okay. So what we need to do there, uh, once we've looked at sort of this, this stuff here, right, uh, I've said that in the asset file, I've already made a tag based thing, but we don't actually set it to anything. So what I want to do is when we read in a new file, right, I want to set uh, the file's uh, tag base, right, to be whatever the current tag count actually is, okay? So the first one will start at zero, and then whatever, however many tags are in that file, the next one, right, will, will actually start at one past the last one uh, for, for the previous file. So it'll, it'll like set what that, what that rebasing value is going to be. So then, then here, what I can do is I can loop through all of the files, right? And I can load out their tag arrays, right? So what I can do is say, okay, for each file, I'll put a note here what we're doing, note, uh, load tags. So when I come in here, what I want to do is say, all right, assuming that this was a file that hasn't had any errors on the file yet, what I'm going to do is, is read in that tag array, right? So I'm going to read in tag array size, like so, and I'm going to read in uh, that tag array, like wherever that was, right? Tags. Uh, oops, that's not where it's going to be. It's going to be somewhere else. All right. So where am I going to read it in, right? I'm going to read it in at the asset tags, right, that, that I just allocated a big thing for asset tags. I'm going to add it, I'm going to load it in at the tag basis offset. So the first one I'll read in, you know, I'll just quickly draw this on the whiteboard for you just in case it's, it's a little too confusing. Uh, I know if you're not a programmer who's been programming for a long time, sometimes it's hard. I think of these things in my head and it's hard sometimes if you haven't done it much to think of them in your head that way. Uh, but basically, we're really talking about something real simple uh, when you get down to it. It's just a, it's just a bunch of fussing. Uh, but basically, we've got file 0, 1, 2, right? Here's their tag arrays. These are the tag arrays. What we want is we want all of these guys, right, to come into one big array. So I want to put this tag array here. I want to put this tag array, right, in here. And I want to put this tag array in here, right? So when I load them, I want to load the first one at tag zero, right? But I want to load the next one at like whatever file what zero's tag count was, I want to load it at that tag count, right? I want to move down and load the next one in there and then the next one in there, right? So that's all I'm doing here is I, I, I made that tag base uh, so that I know, and that's just a rolling number that kind of incremented for each one, just like I said. And then when we do this platform read data from file, we're going to read it in at whatever that tag base offset would be so that they get stacked on top of each other nicely, right? So all I really need to do is compute that tag array size. And obviously that's just going to be the size uh, of the HHA tag uh, times however many there actually were in this thing, right? But that's really all we're talking about. So we're just going to read that out. And now we've got the tag array there and we're good to go, right? Okay, uh, so that's us loading in the tags. 
And we don't really have to touch the tags because the tags don't reference anything, so they don't have any values that need to be moved, right? They don't have anything that has to happen there. Uh, so we load in the tags, uh, and then I guess we could put here a note, uh, allocate all metadata space, right? So we load in those tags and that's all good. And then what we need to do is we need to do, uh, do those assets uh, rebased, right? We need to rebase those assets. So what we need to do here, right, is we need to loop through the assets that are involved in this particular file. And we need to offset the tags by whatever this file's tag base is. So they point into the right part of that tag array, right? So inside here, what we're gonna do is loop over the, all, however many uh, assets uh, there were uh, in this in this sort of group here, right? Uh, and we know that when we load it in, it's going to be loaded in at asset count, right? Uh, because that's how many assets have been filled so far, right? Uh, so what we want to do is say the at, well, and you know what we could even do it if we wanted the absolute asset index here. Um, we could even do it uh, by just saying start at asset count and go to asset count um, plus asset count. Oops, plus asset count for type, right? So we could go through there and then uh, we can get the pointer to the asset really trivially, right? All we do is say that the asset is uh, whatever the assets array is plus the index that we're looking at, that particular asset. We now know that all we have to do is take those uh, tag offsets, right? Uh, which is right here and here. All we have to do is take those guys uh, and rebase them, right? Now, you know, uh, like I said, it's a little bit janky that we, you know, we're, we're kind of using these things flat loaded. HHA asset looks like something that maybe we shouldn't have flat loaded uh, because it's got extra stuff in here and we're having to rebase it. So, you know, six of one half does the other. The tag array looks like something we definitely, um, it was definitely good to flat load because we can just load it in a chunk and it's done. Uh, whereas the assets still, we got a lot of fussing and so who knows. So maybe that's not such a good idea and maybe we should just do these as temporary loads and you know who knows it's not going to matter either way for this game at all it's only done at startup and it's not going to take a huge amount of memory either way because it's just the metadata but you know i'm just trying to call things out like that so you kind of know uh roughly sort of all the things that might be stuff that you would think about uh when you're when you're looking at these sorts of things because maybe you know you're on a project that has a ton of individual assets uh millions of assets and then you uh start caring or something about that, how, how much data they're stored per asset and how much work you do on load. So anyway, uh, when we do that, uh, that would rebase the tags for these assets, the assets that, were, uh, that we just loaded in, uh, and then we would advance by the number of the asset count number. Now, what we also need to do is we need to widen the desk type, right? But I think we've already done that, right? Yeah, we have, right? So if you look here, our, our desk type are, uh, is, is, is already sort of setting up the asset type bounds for this particular asset and we set it here when we're done so that's kind of already done for us as well uh, so i think really the only thing left to do here is to make sure that we actually read in the data right we have to actually do that computation so we want to do platform read data from file we give it the file handle that we were trying to uh, do there we know that we're going to read this many assets in so it's just going to be however many um, assets there are to read times the size right uh, so that's all we have to do there. That's how big of a thing we're reading in. We know we're reading uh, in at a particular offset, right, uh, as well. That offset is a little bit complicated if we think about it. We have to start uh, by taking the header and get the assets array offset. That's where that array starts, right, in the file. We then have to move forwards from the start of the asset array to the location where the first asset in this asset type array is, right? We have to move forward uh, by that much. So we need to move forward by that many assets, right? That jumps to the correct place. Uh, and then we know we have to read however uh, many we're going to try and read times the size of the asset. So that's all good. And then uh, finally, last but not least, we need a place to put them. And we actually already just sort of said where we would, would put them. We would put them uh, at the end of the, the asset array as it currently exists, right? During all of this, we might as well assert that we never go over the asset count uh, that we said that we should have. Uh, and furthermore, at the end of this, we should assert that we have the right number, but it looks like we already did that, right? Uh, so that's uh, also fine. 
Uh, so that seems all good. And the tag count thing here is not really relevant. We didn't end up loading them that way. Uh, so that ends up not really being uh, that big of a deal either. So there we go. Uh, and now what we kind of have to do is start to actually define these, uh, these functions that we are saying that we want the platform library to support for us. We need to actually uh, go ahead and make those a reality, right? We have to actually do the work of having those exist because we, we were writing these codes for us. So we were imagining uh, the best of all possible worlds uh, for the thing that we were doing here. Uh, and of course, that's not actually true anymore. So uh, let's see, there's a couple different ways we could do that. Um, so I'm trying to think of how I want to best approach that. Uh, so I think I'm gonna first if zero out uh, this stuff, right? And I might, uh, we, we, there's a couple of different ways we could do, I, I think I'm just gonna avoid doing baby steps on this one. I think I'm just gonna go full pull on it uh, because I think it'll be code that, that I can step through and see. If that turns out not to be the case, as we get a little further in it, I might do take a switch tax and uh, load through the original file IO routine and then mock up the API to work into that. But I think that that might just end up being more work so unless we hit some debugging snags, I don't think that's what I'm actually going to want uh, to do. So I think we're gonna leave it this way uh, for now. And I'm gonna go ahead and start defining uh, these actual things in here. So those are gonna be in handmade platform, right? Because these are gonna be actual platform API things that we want uh, to have exist for us. So in here, uh, I am going to go ahead and define uh, a new struct, uh, oops. And of course, since we're trying to remain backwards compatible with C so that other people uh, who are using the, who are not using C++, uh, who are trying to link with our platform layers or do other stuff like that can, can do it. Um, so let's go ahead and make sure that we, we support that still. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say that we've got a, a platform file handle, I guess. Uh, and I don't know, you know, I wonder if uh, it looks like, yeah. It looks like for some reason we kind of have two different naming schemes. So there's like game underscore and there's also platform underscore, but I guess anything that like references the platform directly is a platform underscore thing. So that's fine. So we have a platform file handle, right? We don't really know what's going to go in there at the moment, um, but we know we're going to have one. I think also uh, it may be the case uh, that uh, it's really a forward declaration, right? Uh, I think we probably won't ever show what the platform handle actually is, you know? So it's probably something uh, like that, where it's actually a pointer, you know? So we've got something like that. We also have, uh, and, and I suppose we could even make it just be a pointer here, right? The platform handle could just be a pointer. Uh, and then it would literally be something like this, right? Something like that. Uh, so let's see. Let's go a little further here. Um, so yeah, inside our loading code, uh, when we do our platform work callback stuff there, inside our loading code, we do have the problem here where we don't actually, uh, we don't really have, <clears throat> we don't really have things set up to, to comment this out. So I guess, you know, while we're compiling here, I don't know if I'll just ignore those errors or if zero them out, maybe just if zero them out uh, because we're no longer be able to point directly into the HHA contents. Um, oh, well, you know what? Interestingly enough, I guess, well, no, never mind. I, I take it back. I was gonna say something, but the something isn't true. All right, so here we go. We've got platform file group. Uh, so that's another thing that's got to go into our uh, platform file, right? Uh, so we've got a, a, a type def struct platform file group, and that's also going to be uh, a struct that's, that's here. But I think this one's actually going to have actual data. Uh, I feel like we're going to have like file count in it like so. It returns how many there are. And then also maybe a data thing where, you know, that data thing is, uh, is 
How did we say? We did file. No, I guess so that data thing is opaque. So we don't actually expose what, what that is. We just say that, well, the platform's got some data. We're not going to tell you what it is. You can only access it by saying platform open file and saying which of the files from here you want to open, right? So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that one. If I go ahead and copy this in, now we have another uh, function here, right? I've got a, a type def uh, here. Uh, so I want to do essentially this, this same stuff that we were doing. Um, so I want to do that, right? I want to make a new platform specific uh, function. And I don't know how many of these we're going to have. Uh, we'll have a platform get all files of type right um, and that would be in here so let's see let's go ahead and uh, and put that in here right platform get all files of type begin and that would be this guy so platform get all files of Type begin. There we go. And uh, what does that take? It, at this point, it looks like it's just taking an extension, right? Uh, or a type, right? Uh, so that's all that's going to do. And then we also have we've got platform open file, we've got platform read data from file, uh, and we have platform get all files of type end. Uh, we also have platform no file uh, errors. Um, and the thing about platform no file errors, that's the kind of thing we would probably want to be inlined, but I don't know realistically if we really want to force that. I think maybe we do. Uh, and so what I might say, I'm just going to throw this out there. What I might say is let's actually do things this way where there's a preamble essentially for all platforms where there's a b32 or you know something like that which is like has errors right uh, so that way plat no uh, platform no file errors when it when it takes a platform file handle that can just be a nice uh, inline function basically uh, so platform file handle right handle. Uh, that can just be an inline function uh, that actually just returns, uh, you know, the result is if the handle uh, has errors. Right? Uh, so something like that. Of course, again, if we're trying to maintain compatibility with C, we can't do an inline here. Uh, so I guess I would say, you know, maybe let's just do it uh, as a macro so that it will work everywhere uh, for everyone, right? So it would be something like this, right? Uh, where we say we return whatever the not has errors is. So that way we don't actually have to have a round trip through the platform layer just to check to see whether a particular file handle has uh, an error on it, right? Okay. Uh, so these are the actual functions that we need. Uh, so we've got type begin and type end, right? And uh, that is going to take uh, one of these platform file groups. And it takes an actual file group, right? Yeah, because it's pointing data. So it just takes the whole file group, not a pointer to one. Uh, platform get all type in, yeah, so we got the end there. We've got platform open file to do. Oops. And platform open file is just going to take, at the moment, uh, one of those file groups. Uh, so it's going to take a file group and the file index in that group, right? Uh, and that is platform. Uh, open file right and then uh, we did begin and end so we already did that one and so the only other one we have left uh, is this guy which is platform read data from file 
and it is ready to go. Platform read data from file. Uh, read data from, oops, that's not what I want. Uh, that's just platform file handle, handle, uh, U64 offset, U64 size, and uh, void star dest, right? Could say that. So it goes from the source, reads at this offset for this much, and puts it there. Yeah. So that is that, I think. That's everything that we would need, um, pretty sure. Uh, so when we get all these in there, uh, these, these guys have to all be passed down now, right? This is extending our platform API. Uh, so in addition to these guys, right, uh, we basically have, have this stuff now. And uh, these debug platform, tree file memory, read entire file, uh, these two we can probably actually get rid of now. Uh, because we actually have, we will actually be having a, a real uh, file API, right? So this is um, get all files of type begin, uh, and then we've got this guy platform get all files of type end uh, platform open file. And platform read data from file. So, um, yeah, I think that's basically all we need from those guys. And I think, um, I'm not sure exactly how I want to deal with these, these folks. Uh, I think they could just be globals. That's sort of how we started to treat uh, like platform add entry and platform, uh, like I don't know if you guys remember when we did this, uh, we kind of just said, all right, these guys are gonna just exist uh, out in the wild. Uh, and that seems like a pretty good idea. I wonder, so I mean, just you know, thinking about it, if this is just gonna be our dispatch table, right? This is basically our dispatch table um, for hot loading to reconnect, what we could do is we could just do something like this. Uh, so this is like our platform uh, dispatch or platform API, like that. We could just say, okay, you know, this stuff, since it's all known, right? Uh, at least these, uh, we could just put them here, right? And then we could just say, okay, when you call this thing, you get an API, right? You get the platform API. And then that platform API as a whole would just be the global variable that would be, get called, uh, you know, that would get copied uh, every time, right? And that seems pretty safe to me. Uh, that seems like a pretty good idea, uh, if that makes sense. Oops, got the platform API there. Um, that just seems pretty logical to me. That way we kind of get out of the business of having to pass around that those callbacks, right? So if we did that, uh, and we uh, you know want to do this, we could do oh, and you know what else we could do? Since it's called platform API, we could do it this way: get rid of platform at the front of everything, right? And then that platform is just kind of like the variable creates uh, a clear textual thing uh, as you use it, right? So it's platform, you know, arrow add entry, right? Or sorry, dot. Uh, there we go. So let's see, uh, platform dot complete all work. Uh, don't care about those right now. Platform dot add entry. Uh, these are, this is like platform dot open file, platform dot get all files of type, um, platform dot read data from file, right? Just grabbing it out of that. Uh, oh, and then we also have platform file error, right? And I don't know how exactly we want that one to work. Uh, we'll see, but uh, I'm assuming it will also have to be a call into the platform layer. 
All right, so we're initializing here. Platform, get all files of type begin. Uh, cannot cur void. Uh, oh, does it not? Did I? I did not declare it as returning a value, did I? That's not going to be good. Of course, it needs to return a value. Everyone knows that. Uh, so yeah, so if we want to do that, uh, that begin here, should do it that way. And the same would be true of platform open file, right? That should take a platform file handle, right? And uh, return that. All right, so what's going on here? File header, so this is, this is file header magic value, file header, right? HHA contents. Game assets, HHA header. Does not have an overload member. You're right. It does not. Yeah. Uh, and the same would be true here. File header. File header. There we go. So let's see. Platform dot read data from file. Again, just kind of moving it up to uh, speed there. Uh, so asset type ID is actually desk type ID in this case, right? I changed the name of it, so we're just, it's the asset type we're writing. Uh, again, these are just platform dot. Uh, and now we get to the sort of other stuff that I sort of legacy backward here, so platform. So here it's nice, we just go platform equals memory platform API, right? And then we just delete these guys, they go away uh, permanently, right? Uh, and then these just have to be sort of moved up uh, to something like this, right? Uh, and delete these guys here. Let's see. Okay. So now we're almost there. Oops, missed one. So now we're almost there, uh, but we have to actually sort of start putting some of these guys in, right? So in handmade uh, asset, I'm sorry, handmade platform.h, uh, we actually need all of these guys, right? Uh, so we need to, to set up this whole API here, right? This whole thing needs to actually occur. Uh, so we need to do platform.get all files of type, right? Uh, so we need to make a Win32 version of that, and uh, we need to make a Win32 version of this. Yep, yeah, you know. Uh, and so on and so forth. And open file. And so on. Right? So now we've got all that wired up and we just need if we, you know, can now go implement uh, these actual functions, uh, we'd be all set. I thought we had one though that I didn't implement. Shouldn't they give me an error about that? There it is, file error, that's the one. Uh, so I need to uh, also have that one that's, that's called file error, right? And so platform file error. And so platform file error is just a thing that allows us to note that there's been an error, right? So file error, file error, platform file error. And that's just, all that's going to take is just what the error handle was and then some kind of stupid message for now, uh, right? And that's it. So off we go. Uh, and in here, I've got to put the API on the end. And do one for file error. And so I think that's just about it for wiring. So now I just have to actually go and write these functions uh, and then we would be in good shape. So we would need uh, to do a win, uh, sorry, a um, version of each of these guys. Uh, so we've got this one, right? That we want to define and this one. Same deal. And who's next? Platform open file. There we go. And two more. And 
the last one. And if you're wondering if a real, like, uh, if programming languages were actually cool, if they would do this for you, the truth is yes, they would. But of course, as we know, C++ is too busy adding lots of extraneous features and never fixing basic things like this uh, that they should. So it's a lot of typing that doesn't have to happen. Um, but that's just how it goes sometimes. So uh, in here, if we now recompile, we'll have some uh, return value problems, right? Because we aren't actually returning anything from these. But otherwise, we are all wired up now. Uh, and we call into the platform layer in a way that's rebindable and hot loaded full and all that sort of stuff, right? So that's all good, uh, but we have to actually uh, do this this uh, sort of wiring. For now, what I can do is I can just return zeros, right? I can just sort of fake it uh, for now. And so, you know, file platform file group here. Um, file group equals whatever. Uh, we can just return uh, complete garbage to get ourselves compiling. So the thing that we have left to do is when we actually go uh, to load an actual thing in, we now should we now actually have to load it, right? Because we did before what we did is just kind of pointed uh, to the thing that we wanted, but that's not what we actually want to do. Because we don't want to load all the assets at startup. We want to only load assets as we need them. That was the whole point of the streaming system. So what we need to do here is bitmap memory. We actually want bitmap memory to sort of be some space that's reserved for us. So when we're in here in load bitmap, right, what we want to do in load bitmap is push on space for the eventual bitmap, right? So in here, when we do work, when we do work uh, arrow bitmap, we also want to do work bitmap equals push size, right? And we want to reserve a memory slot for it, right? And actually, if you look at what happens here, all of this stuff um, actually can just be done uh, pretty much, you know, like the work order for this thing actually doesn't need to do this stuff. Uh, I, I just want to point this out because, again, like, if you're new to this sort of stuff, a lot of these things I'm kind of, programming is a very sort of fluid process, obviously, and it's easy for people to forget uh, how things are going. So if you think about why we wrote the function this way originally back when we wrote it, why were these things getting filled out in the, in the threaded asset loading system? And the reason was because we didn't know what the width of a bitmap was when we went to load it until we actually pulled in the bitmap file. So if we wanted to do multi-threaded loading, we had to defer that computation of all the extraneous bitmap data until we actually loaded the bitmap file. But now that we have an asset processor, right, that information has been pulled out into a metadata structure that we load at startup that's very small, that we can just load instantly, right? So we know we have the metadata, and it's only the, the payload that's off in, you know, in the asset file that has to get pulled in. And so since we have that data, we can actually move all of this stuff out, and our work order that has to go into the threading system could actually be the same for both sounds uh, and, uh, and bitmaps probably to a large extent because we don't actually have to do anything um, specific to them. Uh, really the only thing I can think of that we might, no, th there's nothing we would need to do. We just, so really all we have to do now is load a little, a chunk uh, of, of memory uh, and that's all it has to do. So we can collapse these things together, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, so I think I would like to do that. So what I want to do now, again, this is kind of a handy little baby steps uh, sort of a situation here. Uh, oops, let me get rid of that. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and continue our baby stepping uh, because I realize there's a good one good thing we could do baby step wise, right? Oops. Move this back up to the top for a second. Uh, and so what we could do baby steps wise is I can if zero this out again, right? like so, uh, and return us to the previous uh, asset loading where we just load the whole asset file you know, in its entirety, right? Uh, and all I have to do that is just report this to that thing that we did there, right? Uh, so if we test to verify that that's working, right? Right, so that's all good. All the assets are loading properly. So all I really need to do now uh, is 
go do those changes that I was about to do of prepping the bitmaps and using a slightly different thing for loading. When we have something, everything working like it is, that gives us the flexibility to do this and know that we haven't introduced any bugs in this change before we go do the other part uh, of using the new file loading routines, which you know could be their own set of bugs. So again, just partitioning the work into clear uh, passes so that again, it, min it minimizes the amount of time that I have to spend debugging problems with the code. Uh, and that's just always a good time saver, right? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna try to, try to see if I can say that there's another thing uh, here, instead of load bitmap work, there's just load asset work, right? And all load asset work is, it's an offset, right? A size to load, uh, if you will, and, uh, and a destination. That's it. So the only thing this thing is gonna do uh, is it's just going to execute that, that load op, and that's, that's it, nothing else, right? Uh, so if I want to do that, um, all I would have to do, right, is take what this routine's doing here, same exact stuff, uh, and now it's going to do load asset work, like so, uh, and it's not going to have to think about the asset at all. It's not going to have to load a bitmaps and any of that stuff, right? It doesn't have to do any of this, right? Um, all it has to do uh, is know how to do the completion stuff, uh, and then how to end the task, right? Uh, so, <clears throat> let's see, what will I need for just that? So I need the task, right? Uh, and it looks like here, uh, I don't quite see exactly how this thing is working. So, work bitmap, it's assigning the pointer but why didn't we just always assign the pointer first? I'm a little confused about that. Because I feel like all I should really have to do is that, right? So really all I need here is the asset slot, right? I just need the slot uh, that is getting set, right? Uh, in fact, I could even make it a little bit more ridiculous than that and say it's not even the asset slot. It's actually just, you know, the asset state even. Uh, but I don't know if we need to go that far. So I'll say that we use the slot um, and we could always change that if we need to. But so, you know, this is what I'm actually talking about. Uh, so basically this routine would look something like do the platform dot read data from file, right? At the work specified offset, the work specified size uh, into the work specified destination uh, and I guess, oh yeah, one other thing we need is the platform file handle, right? Hmm. I just thought of one way we're not going to waste space in a particular place as well. That's pretty good. All right, because uh, when, we, when we need to get this file handle, that will be interesting. All right, so taking a look at this, uh, we do this, this thing here, this... this uh, exactly what we expect uh, and I feel like you know we might uh, we might have to do a check here right we might have to do something like this uh, platform no file errors right uh, we would need to check to make sure that whatever the file handle is didn't peter out on us right didn't didn't die uh, because we don't want to say that we loaded it if we didn't right if we couldn't uh, and there's a couple of different ways we could do that. Like we could choose to check that. Like I could do something here uh, where I say, uh, oh, and what is final state? Oh, was loaded or locked. So we, we need that one as well. There we go. All right. So we could also choose to fill in some garbage here, like some, like make it all bright pink or something. Uh, if or you know all white or something or all zeros if it doesn't succeed so if the file error if, it, if this turns out to be wrong we could still set it to its final state but put garbage in there I don't know if we'd rather do that or rather try to keep trying to load it um, so I don't know we'll we can you know play with that uh, a little bit later on right uh, as we go and so there's like a to do to do should we actually fill in bogus 
data here and set to final state anyway, right? But that's only in an error scenario. So, you know, as long as we don't crash, it's, it's not clear that we want to do anything in particular. Uh, so that's fine. All right. So, right. If I compile that, let's see if we've got everything here. Uh, so that's work slot state, uh, load bitmap work. Um, hmm. That's because I named it wrong. That's supposed to be load asset work. There we go. All right. So that's not getting called. Um, so what I want to do now is switch the bitmap loading function to use load asset work instead of using load bitmap work and have it do all of the work uh, right when we called load bitmap, do all of the setup work directly, right? Uh, so what I want to do is I want to basically grab uh, this stuff, right? And I want to uh, go ahead and, and make all this happen, right? So up front, you know, I want to do all of this, right? And then we're going to totally ifs def uh, this guy out entirely. There we go. Okay. So what's all the stuff that we need to set up now, right? So we come in here and we set, you know, all the stuff that was going to be used for the for the work order, right? Uh, and all that stuff is we're going to have to still do, but uh, let's let's take care of this stuff first. So we have our work bitmap here, right? Uh, and we're initializing all of its stuff. If we grab out the info uh, for the asset, like we would be doing, and that's just be that just be doing this, right? If we set all this stuff up, then we don't have to do any of it, obviously, anymore in the in the uh, in, in this part of the code. So all we need to do here is just reserve space for the bitmap to be loaded. So we can just do a push here, right, uh, in, the, uh, in the assets, in the, arena, you know, in the arena. We can just do a push, uh, sorry, size, right, of how big, the arena, uh, how big it's actually going to be. And obviously that's just going to be the size that would actually get read. Uh, so if you remember up here, uh, we said in the work slot it would just be this this size right here, right? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that amount. We're going to make that room, right? And so that can uh, well, I guess you know what? There's kind of a chicken and egg thing there. So I'll just say uh, you know memory size or something, right? And we'll do that up here. So I'll just say we have memory size, uh, and the memory size is going to be. Uh, the info, uh, well, it's the pitch, right, times the height. That's the total memory size. So that's how many, how much space we actually need for the bitmap. We go ahead and reserve that much space for the bitmap, and then we can fill out uh, our work order, right, uh, and put that on there. And that will just be in the task arena, so it's just temporary memory, right? So we do load asset work. And we want to grab that out. So let's take a look. Oops, and I got to actually load asset work. Uh, in the asset work struct, I have to fill out all of this stuff, right? Uh, so let's see. Where was work task being actually filled out? You know? Where was that actually getting set? Oh, there it is, right there. Okay. Uh, so we've got to fill out work task. We want to fill out work slot, right? Which is just going to be uh, this essentially, right? Asset slots. We want to fill out the work slot. Really know why these were not phrased as pluses. Uh, all right. So grab all that stuff out. We then need the platform file handle. This is the part that I said, oh, we'll be able to save some space. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, we need the offset in the file, so where it actually was. Uh, and that is this, right? It's that date data offset. Five minute warning, pshaw. Uh, so right, I need the offset, there it is. Uh, I need the size, and we've already computed that, it's memory size. Uh, we don't need the assets. Uh, we don't need the ID, uh, the work bitmap 
Uh, we do actually need, obviously, uh, that's just going to be bitmap. Here we go. Um, yeah. So is all that stuff set then? Bitmap. And then we got final state. So all we need is destination, and the destination is the bitmap memory, right? So I think that's the complete work order, right? That's everything that's filled out. And the slot, right, the work slot, uh, I, I just don't see why we can't preset it to be the bitmap, right? I don't really see why we can't do that. Because when you do, uh, when you when you get the asset, oh, as I guess we're actually kind of using that as the thing. So I feel like that's just sloppy, and we don't really want that. What we want to do is make sure that the asset is actually loaded, right? Uh, I feel like that's the cleaner way to do it, and I don't know why we weren't doing that exactly. Um, Like it just doesn't, does it make sense to you? Because it doesn't super make sense to me why we wouldn't just do uh, something like asset equals zero and then do the if here. Now maybe it's just because we're trying to avoid an if, right? Um, but I don't know. And so we could just do that up here, right? Uh, we could set the pointer, but it just feels like why do extra work in the threaded part? Why, why put, you know, sort of, setup work up there when we don't really, you know, when it's something that could have just been done clean inline, then we know that it doesn't have to be thread safe. It doesn't have to be all these other things, right? Like why pile any more stuff there than we need to? Because the less stuff we can have being uh, multi-thread dependent, right, the better uh, in that sense, unless we really think we need it for the speed or something. So if we go ahead and do the get bitmap, uh, we could change that to just look to see whether the state of the thing is in a state where it could be used. Uh, and that seems fairly reasonable. I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I'm a little waffly about it. Uh, but if you take a look here, we could basically just say, you know, the result equals zero. Um, or, you know, it, we could even just do uh, asset slot slot equals asset slots plus ID value. And then we could just do slot state greater than or equal to asset loaded. If so, return the bitmap, otherwise don't, right? And that would be a pretty trivial way uh, to make sure that we were always returning the right thing. And so if I do that, then I don't have to worry about this anymore. So I can I can just you know, I can I can not have to do anything particularly odd there, right? So that seems all good. Uh, and so for the moment, like I said, uh, this particular part is is uh, whoops cannot convert loaded sound. Yes, that's totally true. Again. All right. Uh, so assets, assets. That's actually just assets. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Load bitmap work. That's load asset work. Right. Uh, assets. It's just assets. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Asset slots. Is it just slots? It is. Uh, and bitmap is equal to bitmap, yeah. It's not a member of load asset work. Oh, well, that's true, it's not. It is not. And uh, that's just equal to, to, oh, work slot equals bitmap. Uh, I think, I think we're just about done with that. Right? I think we've basically finished everything that we need to do. Uh, so the only th caveat there, now that everything's being taken care of there, is since we are still not quite doing the file stuff, right? Uh, when we come up in here, so we gotta basically do, you know, something like this, where we would actually 
uh, set that data, uh, you know, we would actually have to do sort of the data load here. Uh, but, you know, um, I'm thinking that what I would like to do is in here directly uh, when we would have gone ahead and done that, uh, done that task. What I want to do is I'm going to just kind of nuke the task for now, uh, you know, so make it so it doesn't actually do anything, right? Uh, other than do the complete, right? Make it so it doesn't actually do anything, and I'll just set the, uh, I'll actually just set the correct data value in here, right? And that way I'll at least be able to see if it's, it's pseudo working or not, right? But it's basically just sort of cheating it out, just saying, oh wait, actually, uh, we'll just, you know, point it to the right data. Uh, oh, yeah, well, we can't really call that either yet until we have a valid file handle. So I guess that's another thing that we have to if zero out. There we go. All right, so then we're back to loading, so that's good. And I think we have everything in position now to just, as soon as we implement the Win32 side of things that we need, uh, we should be good to go, right? Uh, and we couldn't do the exact same thing to audio, uh, so we can change the audio over to do exact, you know, pull this into the audio side as well. So that's what we'll do next week, uh, but I want to go ahead and go to Q&A. Uh, so let's, let's do exactly that. Let's go to Q&A. If you have any questions about what we did, um, please ask them now. Uh, put a Q colon in front of them so I can see. With this system, is it possible to add an updated version of an asset in a new .hha file without modifying the original? How would the IDs work in this case? Uh, yeah, so what's interesting about that is, yes, you actually could. You could in certain circumstances and not in others. We would have to do a little more work in certain circumstances than in others. And the reason I say that is for tag uh, for um, tag matched queries, it would just work because uh, what we could do is just, you know, if we wanted to say that certain HHA files had preference over previous HHA files, right? Um, then we, then whatever was the last asset that was concatenated on would be the one that would be picked or whichever the first one is, whichever way we do it. Basically, uh, you know, if you take a look at uh, in here, we've got those asset queries uh, that uh, that you can use to that we were using to get the assets back from like a tag right from a from a tag vector so when we were doing that when we do get best match get best match bitmap right that calls into here and it, it uh, <clears throat> where is that this one right here it calls into here and what this is going to do is it's going to pick uh, the first it's going to prefer the first thing uh, if, if a bunch of different assets in, the, in that asset type had the same match amount, it's going to prefer the one that came first, right? Because uh, it's a greater than. If it was greater than or equal, it would prefer the one that came last. So basically, if we just sorted when we load, if we sort our HHA files by newest to oldest, then you would automatically replace any uh, asset you know, with a with with the new one but for ones where you're in an asset type where you're just picking a random one uh, that that wouldn't work right that would not do it uh, now I don't really know if I care about that like I'm not thinking of HHAs as our patch system right which is when you would presumably do that uh, but I don't know maybe if you wanted it as a mod as a way to mod things uh, you know, I'm not sure. So if we wanted to do something where we actually replaced assets, uh, we would have to do something. We would have to have some way in the HHA file, we have to like add essentially some kind of annotation that told it to get rid of some asset from a previous file, right? That said like, don't use this other asset anymore. Uh,
And to be honest, you know, that's not that hard to add. Really. Um, I feel like that's really not that bad. Uh, so if we really wanted to do that, we could, right? And the way that we would do that uh, in, a, in a pretty trivial way, right, is inside here, uh, we'd basically have a thing that was uh, something like this. So we'd say, all right, I'm going to have a way of specifying a table that says, I want you to get rid of some of the assets from some other file, right? So it would be like, you know, squid, something like this. Uh, and you would have this in the file itself. And then here you would have asset index, right? And then when we loaded each individual file in, we would take the asset removal table and we would, for any file that matches that asset removal table, uh, squid, we would, rem we would just not, as we were spinning over the assets, we would not uh, grab that particular asset index, right? So if we wanted to do that, we could, so if we wanted to allow you to replace certain assets or even just remove them, like you don't actually have to replace it with something. You could literally just have a file that, that nerfs out a previous files, one of its assets, right? Um, that would probably be the most straightforward. What will get rid of the initial flicker of the character at startup? Uh, so basically right now we don't try to preload anything, if that makes sense. So what happens is the first frame on which an asset is used is the first time that the asset system has a, has, is told that it needs to load it. And so you're never going to, it's not going to be able to load it instantaneously. It's putting it into a thread to be loaded later. So anytime uh, you encounter a new thing, it will blink, right? So the thing that will get rid of that is just, we will introduce some limited pre-caching stuff. It's, won't be super complicated, but basically all it will do is stuff that says ahead of time, hey, uh, you know, warm up these sprites, because like this monster, we know it's, you know, we, we kind of sort of know what's on, you know, in our in our region. We know more than what's just on the screen. We know like a, a fairly big apron around the screen. We'll just say, hey, pre-cache, you know, start loading all those guys, because you're going to need them. And that way they'll always be there in time and we won't have to worry, if that makes sense. As a programmer implementing a game with fairly simple graphics, any suggestions on finding somebody to commission art assets from or similar if you don't happen to know a good digital artist? Uh, not really. That's sort of a, not really a handmade hero kind of topic, if that makes sense. That's, that's not a programming thing. <laughs> Anybody else? All done? Lazy Friday? I am totally fine with. It's looking quiet. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all good. We can wind down for today. Uh, I think we've got everything in place now. Uh, although I do want to, I didn't quite get time today to move the audio. I, I would like to, um, I'd like to move the audio system. Uh, so, uh, you know, in handmade asset, uh, dot H, uh, sorry, dot CVP. Uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take load sound and I'd like to move load sound to use just that load asset. So instead of having another work queue callback for sound, I'd get rid of that. So they'd both be going through the same one, uh, both bitmaps and audio would be going through the same one, which is this one, uh, sorry, which is uh, this one, right? So I'd like to move the audio over there, get that working as well, 
to make sure everybody's happy. And then we implement the Win32 uh, platform layer calls that we have spec'd and we're good to go. That would be it. Um, and then we're moving on to like the very hardest part of the asset system because a lot of this stuff has been pretty easy as you've seen. Uh, we're, we'll move on to the, the hard part which is basically how we want to deal with if we've got a bigger asset footprint than will fit in memory eventually, right? So, you know, if the user's machine has two gigs of physical memory and we're using, you know, half a gig for game data or something and we want to use, uh, you know, so we want 1.5 gigs to be spent on resources, you know, the question is how do we deal with that, you know, how do we handle when we don't have, uh, when we have four gigs of, of art assets? You know, we're gonna be loading them in and eventually we're gonna get to a point where we have to start flushing stuff out to make room for other things. And so, like I said, it's kind of like we have to implement our own virtual memory system because we want to try and have this like constant window, if that makes sense, so. So, uh, that will be pretty challenging, but that's really all that's left in the asset system that's, that's kind of uh, tricky. Uh, and, uh, and so we kind of saved the worst for last, if you will. And so I don't know where that puts us to on our, on our to-do list. Uh, did we already do this? I don't think we did that yet, uh, but that's on there. Uh, so yeah, I feel like, um, I feel like we're kind of, going to eat all this up. I feel like we've I feel like we've actually done all of those audio to-dos pretty much, right? I mean, we'll spend a little more time on them later on when we do the game stuff, but uh, we are able to play both both types of sounds now. Ambient sounds, music, and everything we can do. Uh, and our asset streaming, we've all we really have to do is this memory management one. And so we'll be able to basically do a huge chunk checked off here. Uh, yeah, it's getting good. It's gonna be exciting. All right, okay, let's wind it down. Let's close everybody. And uh, I don't know what that's supposed to be. That was me drawing where we're loading the tags. Uh, so yeah, <clears throat> let's close all that down. And say thank you everyone for joining me for another episode of Handmade Hero. It has been a pleasure coding with you as always. I am going to be very happy to see the asset system all nice and bundled up. So I think next week uh, will be a fun week. It will get us probably up to the point where we're sort of doing the memory management, but we're not going to finish the memory management next week because there's going to be some trickiness there. Uh, so I think we're looking at probably two weeks before we can check that off our list for good. Uh, and then, yeah, audio kind of looked almost done too. We'll maybe take a quick peek back at that and see if there's anything else you want to do engine-wise on the audio before checking that off too. And then we're just down to renderer and debug code. And the renderer, we did a lot of the hard work. So we're really, man, this is looking good. It's looking good, people. Uh, 200 days may turn out to not have been such a crazy estimate, which is only like 200 hours. I don't know, let's say 210, 220 hours if you count for some of the marathon. Like, I guess we've done one marathon stream and we did one two hour stream. But man, that is so few hours. And we're gonna have a pretty awesome 2D engine to play with uh, for such a few number of hours. It's like, you know, five work weeks starting from nothing. Uh, so I don't know, it's gonna be pretty sweet and uh, I'm pretty excited about it. I hope you're excited about it too. And uh, yeah, so I will go ahead and wind things down. Thank you very much for joining me. I will see you hopefully here back on Monday Probably 5 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time again, but be sure to check the tweet bot. Uh, you can always go to handmadehero.org and check the old tweet bot uh, to find out uh, when the stream will be if you want to know. Also, as always, if you want to follow along at home, if you pre-order the game on handmadehero.org, you can get access to the source code every night uh, where you can download it and play around with it at home and experiment, all that good stuff. We also have a forum site where we have community annotated episode guide, uh, to pass videos if you want to catch up on older videos. We have a forum for you to ask questions. We have uh, community uh, ports to Mac and Linux that they've got. So a lot of good stuff there. Uh, we also have a Patreon page uh, that you can go to if you want to support the video series. So check all that stuff out at handmadehero.org when you get a chance. There's some good stuff up there. All right, thank you everyone. And I'll see you back here on Monday. Until then, have fun programming and I will see you guys on the internets.